A $200 million facility at Jurong Port will promote greener concrete production through recycling and cleaner practices, part of the integrated construction park set for completion by 2030. Well, this will help construction companies streamline logistics and help them cut costs. All benefits that could lower housing prices for consumers while supporting environmental sustainability. Quite literally the building blocks of the future. Materials like cement, sand and granite are now just a stone's throw away from each other at Jurong Port. This will be Singapore's first integrated construction park, designed to make the construction sector's supply chain shorter, leaner and greener. What we want to do is to consolidate all the downstream construction activities into one single location right next to our waterfront. Proximity is the key to our success. For our industry partners, this will lead to lower costs and greater efficiency. For the nation as a whole, we hope this will contribute to more affordable housing and greater friendliness to our environment. For starters, bulk carriers like these can now dock and offload raw materials directly, without the need for smaller barges in between. And with the new ready-mixed concrete ecosystem, aggregates are then conveyed straight to storage or mixing plants, each capable of producing 45,000 cubic meters of concrete per month. That's 50% higher than their previous capacity. One concrete supplier highlights that a longer lease period at such a site is another key advantage. It gives you visibility into the future and thereby uh, for any business person, uh, the sense of investment, you have more confidence to really uh, put in more money to invest in higher state-of-art equipment, to invest in higher efficiency equipment. By bringing together these key construction activities, the park creates economies of scale. But that's just the beginning. It also frees up over eight hectares of land, clearing the way for other national priorities. And the environmental impact? It saves over a million truck trips annually, cutting 23,500 tonnes of CO2 emissions. But the benefits don't stop here. With the full park set for completion by 2030, even greater efficiencies and savings are on the horizon. Looking ahead, we will continue to develop more integrated construction parks around Singapore, such as at Pulau Ponggol Barat. These new ICPs will enable more construction firms to reap the benefits from the ecosystem of advanced technologies, logistical efficiencies, and co-located synergistic construction facilities. By 2027, an integrated construction and prefabrication hub will be added to the Jurong site, specialising in the production of precast building components. This will be followed by the development of a steel ecosystem. Together, these facilities will primarily serve the growing construction needs in Western Singapore. Elakia Savaraji takes us through the process of how the ready-mixed concrete ecosystem actually works. Materials to make concrete arrive at different ports and terminals here in Singapore. Granite and sand used to arrive in Tuas and Pongol, while cement mostly arrives at Jurong Port, which is the nation's main gateway for general and bulk cargo. When concrete is ready to be made, these materials are trucked to plants all across the island. And moving these materials alone contributes to around 3 million truck trips a year. The planned integrated construction park at Jurong Port aims to streamline these movements and more, starting with the newest ready-mixed concrete ecosystem. Arrival, storage and batching are all made at one facility. And here, granite and sand arrive on ships and are offloaded directly onto conveyor belts. And from there, most of the materials will go into storage where it can be stockpiled up to 14 metres high. And some will go straight to concrete mixes to serve immediate construction needs. And that's where a process called batching will take place. And that's when a combination of cement and water are added to the mix. And once that's ready, concrete trucks are washed, clean and ready to head straight to construction sites a process that cuts a third of the total number of truck trips a year. Right, let's get some concrete analysis on this topic with Mr. Kelvin Wong. He's CEO of the Building and Construction Authority. 
And also with us, you heard from him earlier, Mr. Terence Xiao, he's CEO of Durham Port. Okay. Let's start first with mm. you, Mr. Xiao. Yeah. What you mentioned earlier in the report, proximity is key to our success. Elaborate on that. Well, I guess uh, con to make concrete, you need a lot of raw material. You need sand, you need stones, you need cement, and you need water. When we looked at the flow of these raw materials, one thing really stood out. Trucks, trucks, and more trucks. So, uh, As in different trucks bring these different that's things right, together that's right. from yeah. different parts that's if right. you don't have them in a single ecosystem. That's right. right. You know, a truck would bring the, the raw materials from our port to different storage sites. Another truck would bring the same materials from the storage site to the batching plants uh, that was mentioned earlier. And yet another truck would bring the wet concrete to the various construction sites. With so many heavy trucks running all over the place, you can imagine how much uh, business cost and how much manpower cost our construction sector has to endure. And, and so we thought, why not put everything together in one single place next to our waterfront? And that's where proximity is the key. Right, the, the concept is not complicated. Okay. We're just making use of proximity. Okay, I'm going to come back to you on that. But let's bring in Mr. Wong at this point. Now, he's talking about cost in terms of business cost, manpower cost. But there's also cost in terms of environment. Every truck that drives here drives there. Right. Emissions, uh, petrol, you name it, you've got it. Yeah. So in the built environment, and, and that's something that has come up increasingly. And certainly after COVID, we've been talking a lot about it. It's every part of design, construction. How does this new facility factor? So definitely, I mean, the building sector in Singapore contributes about 20% of our carbon emissions here in Singapore. So when we are able to bring all these synergistic activities together, like what uh, the, the report covered just now, we are able to save 1 million truck trips per year and actually more than 200 batch trips uh, mm -hmm. per year. So that, that amounts to about 4,000 tonnes, more than 200 okay, largest okay. trips okay. a year. So that all that add together to actually bring about savings of about 4,000 tons of CO2 uh, on an annual basis. And that's about planting 50,000 trees annually. Mm. So actually, all the products and services that are coming out from this integrated construction park is actually more sustainable because it's has, it has a lower embodied carbon. Mm. Yeah. It, it, the way both you gentlemen put it now, it seems such an obvious, simple, <laughs> unthinking solution. So why didn't we do it earlier? Well, actually, it requires a, a player like Jerome Port to be willing to take up the, take the step of investing in that common infrastructure. Mm. I mean, Terence mentioned about the easy thing about bringing all the different players together just next door to one another. So that brings a lot of efficiency. When Terence mentioned about trucks and more trucks, because every truck trip actually brings about some delays and some disruptions. So, so actually, by bringing all the parties together, you eliminate all that inefficiencies. But still, you require a player like Jerome Port to actually invest in that common infrastructure, that automated conveyance belt that actually brings about a new level of efficiency and gains for all the tenants. I'll let Terence talk a little bit more about that. Well, I, I would say that building the structure, I think you've, you've seen the roller coaster and all. It wasn't simple. It was quite technically challenging. But actually what was far more challenging was persuading the industry to come together and try out this new model of sharing a facility rather than each running their own um, you know, individual plots of, of, of concrete batching and storage and so forth. So how did you persuade them? Well, it took a lot of work, but ultimately, I think we had a lot of support from the government, especially BCA. Um, but at the end of the day, it was all about commercial sense, right? It has to make commercial sense for them. If it does not make commercial sense, why would they take the risk? Why do they, would they go into something that is totally alien to the current mode of uh, operations? So I, I think we work very closely with the industry to come up with these uh, uh, calculations and analysis to ensure that uh, at the end of the day, it must make commercial sense. And thankfully it did. And they were prepared to come on this journey with now, us. You are, you are CEO of Jurong Port. Yep. So you have to care about these people making, uh, I suppose, not making a loss anyway. But for Jurong Port, mm. it also has to make commercial sense. That's right. Yeah. And it does. And it does. Um, 
because we are we have invested in that facility, of course, uh, we would then lease it out to these uh, companies, uh, and that will be a, uh, an important source of income for us. And the other part of it, of, of course, is that when all this sand and stones and cement comes to Jurong Port, uh, that's where we also gain a lot of uh, revenue. Uh, so by, and by concentrating everything in one single location, of course, it helps the companies, but it also helps us as a port in growing our revenue and in growing our volumes. Yes. No, and I think directionally, <clears throat> we have been working very closely with the industry to actually move towards the goals of you know, improving productivity, mm. Uh, resilience as well as sustainability. I mean, in a landscape, Singapore, and also a place where you know, we have an aging working population, it's very important for all industry players to actually be able to transform themselves and actually achieve a much higher level of productivity. Otherwise, the viability of the business itself will be challenged. Yeah. Well, Mr. Tsai, I was talking about the, the task of persuading uh, mm. what is a, an alien concept for well, something new that frightens anyone. Uh, when you deal with built environment, and that includes so many aspects of construction, do you face, how do you make people change their minds and take on something that they have not done in the past? Well, I think, <clears throat> so it's not an easy task. It's, it's something that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, and I think we have also been kind of working across the value chain from the developers, which includes government agencies, uh, down to the consultants, to the contractors to really um, demonstrate that there is a better way to do business. And like what Terence mentioned, at the end of the day, it, it has to be profitable. Mm. Um, so it is about re redesigning the jobs as we introduce automation to be able to redesign the jobs mm. and actually enable the industry to attract better talents, which is yet another challenge that they are also facing. So when we're able to demonstrate the advantages of the transformation, actually we will find that more and more uh, companies are coming on board. So for example, another area of transformation that we are making to the industry is the deployment of robotics and automation. And actually in the last one year, we have seen um, the adoption of about 18 different new robotics and automation solutions over 44 projects just over the last one year. And actually all this is because, while well, the cost of robots have actually dropped and, and the other thing is that we have been able to demonstrate that it's applicable here in Singapore. All right, final question and, and I won't interrupt you, first yourself and then yourself. So uh, just to play devil's advocate here, uh, some things cannot be predicted. So this is set for full completion by 2030. In mm. this time between now and then, mm. do you foresee what's the greatest difficulty that might arise between now and then? First yourself mm. and then yourself. Well, I, I think uh, we have made good progress uh, on developing that more complete and larger integrated construction park with this uh, RMC ecosystem that we've built. The next step for us is to gather a few prefabrication players to locate right next to the RMC facility. These this prefabrication players, they need a lot of concrete, they need a lot of steel, and locating them next to the RMC uh, facility is a no-brainer. And I think we have been managed to persuade them to take on this challenge and take on this new mindset as well. So I think that will be the next step for us. So, Pretty confident that we'll be able to get it done, especially with the good foundation that we have set so far. So I would say I'm pretty confident that we would be able to do it in a way that benefits both the industry and benefits the nation as a whole. Yeah. All right, final 30 seconds for you, Mr. Wong. Yeah. No, I think challenges are everywhere. Yeah. Uh, even without us doing this in the uh, you know, this ICP, there will be challenges. So what we actually really excited about is all the new opportunities that this ICP is opening up. Um, so we are looking at how we can continuously improve, introduce technologies, including, you know, comp really making the whole supply chain to the construction site a lot more leaner and more efficient. And actually, you know, the built environment plays a very important role for Singapore with all the exciting projects that we have, including Changi Terminal 5 and the Long Island development. Um, you know, the built environment actually enables all that growth and also build the place that we all call home. So actually, we're never done building Singapore and, you know, the transformation is therefore very exciting and, and something that we are looking, working together on. Well, thank you for making something so concrete, so exciting and, and <laughs> understandable for us. Uh, Mr. Kelvin Wong from the Building Construction Authority and Mr. Terence Seo, CEO of Jurong Thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much.